What is up everybody, Tegan here with High Point Scientific. Today's video is gonna be a short tutorial on narrow band combination, and that's combining sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen data together to create a color image in PixInsight. So before we start editing, there are several links in the description that we want you to look at. The first being a PDF form of this exact video. If you prefer reading along as you post process, then go ahead and check out that link. Secondly, there is a link to the data set that we will be using in this video. It's 20 hours worth of data on the Veil Nebula, and it is free for you guys to post process. If you want to post process this data and post it on Instagram, be sure to hashtag HPS Veil Nebula so we can see all of your results. And lastly, there is another link to a live stream of me and Kyle post processing this data the way that we would post process this data personally. Now, with all of that being said, let's start editing. Okay, so here on the left, we have our sulfur data. Here we have our hydrogen alpha, and here we have our oxygen data. And we're going to be using the LRGB combination tool in PixInsight to combine these. And it's super simple. So first, I personally like to go ahead and stretch the data manually. So we're gonna start with sulfur. I'm going to do a histogram transformation. And this is right out of the stack raw data. So I like to bring my midtones almost all the way up. Go ahead and apply it. And then bring in about a quarter of the way up and then back down to where you don't clip the blacks but you get a nice dark gray tone. Okay, so we have our sulfur data stretched and we're gonna do the same with hydrogen alpha. Histogram transformation. And what we're gonna do is make sure that the background somewhat matches the background of our sulfur data. So bring your midtones all the way up. Go ahead and apply it. Bring your midtones up a bit more, and then bring your darks down to about right there, I would say. Okay. Then go ahead and exit out. And then we have our oxygen data. We're going to do the same thing. Bring up the midtones. Apply it bring up the midtones once again, and then we bring down the darks to about right there. Okay, so we have our sulfur on the left, hydrogen in the middle, and our oxygen data on the right. Now, just to let you know, these are star combined already, or star aligned, so they do match up, which is important, otherwise you're gonna get some really wacky colors. Okay, so once we have these stretched, the next portion is to just simply go into process, all processes, LRGB combination, and typically the Hubble palette is SHO, sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen. So you would put your sulfur in for your red, your hydrogen in for your green, and your oxygen in for your blue channel. You're gonna map each of these narrow band channels to an RGB, um, color set and it's going to create the Hubble style image. Now you can get creative with these colors, but first we're gonna just start off with standard SHO. So I like to just drag my sulfur data into the red channel. I like to map my hydrogen to green and then my oxygen to blue. And you can go ahead and run the process Okay, and what you should see here, let's go ahead and invert this so you guys can get a better idea of what this looks like. Okay, so you have the greens and hydrogen, the blues and oxygen, and the oranges here. You can barely see the oranges and you know that's that's the sulfur data there. Um, kind of the red and the green mixing together to, make, to get an orange. So this is one way. Um, and you can also tweak your stretches if you want one channel to be a bit more prominent than the other channel. So for instance, let's minimize this. Let's say I want to stretch my hydrogen alpha data a bit more. There wasn't too much green in there, but let's say I want a bit more green. Then you can go in, histogram transformation, and then you can stretch your HA data a little bit more. Go ahead and apply it. Now you can see if I if I do control Z back and forth, 
how much brighter that green is. So when you combine it, you know that your green data, your hydrogen alpha data, or that green color is gonna be much more prominent. So let's go ahead and run LRGB process again, LRGB combination. Now everything's still input, so you can just run the sequence or run the process. Okay, so now you can see the change that we made. Invert it if you compare. The data in the green is significantly, or the the, um, the the hydrogen alpha data in our second image is significantly increased. And you can do that with um, sulfur and oxygen as well. Or you could completely switch up the SHO palette. Let's say you want your oxygen in red, your hydrogen in green, and your sulfur in blue. You can go ahead and apply that. It's gonna run the, run the process and it's gonna look entirely different. See, I th okay, so I think we stretched the hydrogen a bit much. I'm gonna go back, um, control Z on my hydrogen alpha data, um, just get it back to baseline where we had it and then go ahead and apply it. So this is the OHS combination. And I find this one pretty unique. Um, let's go ahead and rotate this for you. Okay, so you get the reds and the blues that you kind of would in that standard HOO palette, but then you get these green structures up here where the hydrogen is just really abundant. And I think this is a, an awesome um, style of, you know, an awesome palette that I haven't personally played along, around with much. So I really like the um, OHS palette for this nebula personally. Okay, so that is basically it. All you want to do is, you know, make sure you stretch your data, star align your data, stretch your data, go up to process and LRGB combine, and you can map them any way that you would like. You can also do the standard HOO palette. You can completely, you know, get rid of the sulfur data and just use your hydrogen and oxygen data. So if you only have two filters, this is when this comes in handy. So up in process, you go back to LRGB combination. For hydrogen, you wanna use red. And then for oxygen, you wanna use green. And then drag your oxygen also down and map it to blue. So you have the HOO palette. Go ahead and run the process and you'll get a much more natural looking photo of the Witch's Broom Nebula. And if we invert this, now you can see, you know, the standard blue, teal, red um, that this nebula would actually look like um, if you could see color through a telescope um, or if you use RGB filters. And this is the standard, you know, the, the way that most people like to go about this specific target. And of course, you can stretch your data a bit more. You know, let's bring up the um, midtones here. So there's a lot of data that I was able to collect here that's kind of just hidden back there. Okay, so we stretched our oxygen data. Now let's stretch our hydrogen alpha data. Like I said, there are multiple ways to do this. You can do it, you can take the stars out and you can stretch the stars, uh, or you can stretch the data without the stars. And here you can see um, a simple stretch reveals a lot more data and a lot more detail in this nebula. But what you can also do is just take your image on the right, for instance, use histogram transformation, and you can stretch this image as well, just like that. But you wanna stretch the individual channels if you want reds a little bit more than blues or the greens to pop out a little bit more than your reds and that's all personal preference. 
Okay, so that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions at all, please let us know in the comments below. We'll be more than happy to assist. Again, my name is Tegan from High Point Scientific, and we really hope that this tutorial helped you. Clear skies.